Well, welcome everyone, and thank you for coming to our SciTech lecture today. We have a lot of visitors here, and, and we love to see that, and we have a lot of, of familiar faces from our campus, and it's, it's my pleasure to welcome all of you. I'm Michael Ayers, and I'm Dean for Math and Science here at Forsyth Tech. I, I want to, in particular, point out a group of, uh, of hands, handsome young scientists behind us who are from Valley Academy uh, with their principal, uh, Principal Fitzgerald. Thank you all so much for coming today. And Jim Crawford was able to set this up, and I want to point out Jim in particular, if you'll wait. Jim is a graduate of our biotech program and went on to become become a faculty member now in our biotech program. He's teaching a bioethics class, which is fantastic. Uh, and currently, Jim works as uh, the head of, cl of uh, cl uh, clinical GMP at Carinetics. So a real success story of, of our program. And uh, certainly, all of you young folks have that kind of future uh, waiting for you. Um, this, this series of, of lectures is really a, a, an exciting opportunity for folks in our community. We've heard about so many new discoveries and, and heard from many folks uh, in all sorts of different areas. And, and I just think it's a real jewel uh, for our community here at Forsyth Tech. And we thank you all for coming. Uh, and we certainly encourage you to come uh, to, to all of these, but certainly the ones that you're able to come to. Uh, I'd like to introduce Mr. Russ Reed, who is the Executive Director of the National Center for the Biotechnology Workforce. Did I get it right that time? <laughs> I finally learned. Thank you so much, Russ. Thank you, Dean Ayers, and uh, I want to thank the faculty that's here today, and as well uh, thank Jim Crawford for making sure that Valley Academy has uh, had a good tour and had a good afternoon. Have you had a good tour so far? Excellent. Great, great. Um, this is a special, uh, you'll see in the agenda, it says that I'm a PI. Well, uh, we t Jim talked about CSI today, so it's not that kind of PI. So, um, however, that could be a lot of fun. So, we have a study with the National Science Foundation, and um, they have a division called the Advanced Technological Education Group. And we won a grant a couple of years ago called the Biosciences Industrial Fellows Program. So uh, this grant allows people to come into the college uh, for a 30-day period. They actually come from right across the country. Uh, and we had our first class last year, and we have uh, actually three of our people here to talk about that. But before I do that, I'd like to have come to the podium um, Denise Schweitzer from Roan Cabarrus Community College, who is my co-PI, so we're both private investigators, and also uh, Michael Welsh, who's our study coordinator, who makes this role and happen. So will you please come up and join us? And uh, they know our group really well, our fellows, and they're going to introduce them. But at the same time, um, I just want to turn it over to Denise. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm with uh, Roanne Cabarrus Community College. And several of the community colleges here in the uh, Piedmont area of North Carolina have been involved with this project. We were host sites for the fellows during their 30 days here in North Carolina. And we each had an opportunity for four or five days to work with the fellows in the laboratory, uh, kind of as a boot camp orientation for them before they went out and, and actually visited the uh, bioscience industry. So it was a very worthwhile experience and meaningful experience even for us. And I, when I heard today that the fellows were going to talk to, give this talk and talk to the community about their experience, I wanted really right away to come up here. So um, um, that's my role in the project. I want next to bring up Micah Welsh, who I see on the, on the uh, sheet that her title is coordinator, but that does not cover all of the things that she did. She really was the glue to make this whole project happen, from driving the bus to arranging the food to shepherding the, herding the fellows, uh, all of those kinds of things. She was absolutely invaluable. And since she spent 30 days 24-7 with the fellows, I thought she's the best person to introduce them to you. Thank you, Denise. Well, it was a whirlwind of activity last June, and we had a really good group of people. 
We were fortunate enough to have four people from Forsyth Tech who are able to participate. Three of them are here with us today. And if you would come on up and take your place at the table, um, I will talk about you as you come up. First of all, we have Damon Lindell, and he works in adult education. Right now he's coaching, and he w is a great talker, so you'll <laughs> like listening to him. Uh, we also have Jude. He is a PhD, and he teaches in our life science program. He is a very serious individual, and he was very interesting to work with. Um, I would also like to say that this group, we had some scientists and we had some non-scientists. And the way that they automatically connected themselves, that one scientist with a non-scientist, was really remarkable. And they were able to lead each other through the process. And that, I think, really enhanced the non-sciences people's experience. Um, and Jude was one of those people, so his contribution was invaluable. We also have Heather King. She is a Forsyth Tech instructor. She teaches developmental math. And I always said she was my, my sleeper because she's quiet and reserved and she sits back and you don't think she's really paying attention. And then when it comes down to it, she knows all about what's going on, probably more so than you do. We even had the opportunity to play Jeopardy down at the Capstone Center. So our group divided up into like four teams and even with the scientists in competition with her, she was actually the one answering the questions. So that was really great. Thanks all of you for being here today. And we really appreciate what you've done. I'll hit this button and it'll project up there. And whichever one of you wants to go first, I'll let you take over. Okay. Hi, I'm Russ Reed. I'm the Executive Director of the National Center for the Biotechnology Workforce here at Foresight Tech in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We're part of BioNetwork, uh, and BioNetwork is a statewide organization that uh, does training for workers and training for students. Uh, we have a great opportunity this uh, summer coming up in June 2015. For the month of June, we would like to invite up to 12 uh, instructors. They can be from community colleges, they can be from high schools, or they can be from universities. Uh, the key component is they, they would have to want to do a 30-day session learning about the biosciences. And um, we actually take people right across North Carolina to see the various institutions that do the biosciences here in North Carolina. And at the same time, they'll have the opportunity to work at various colleges doing hands-on skills, lab skills. So it's not necessary that you be a bioscience instructor, but it is important that you want to take a message of what is happening in the biosciences back to your college uh, to uh, contextualize the curriculum so that people have a better idea what the biosciences are trying to achieve. So um, we invite you to come. Uh, there'll be visits to uh, Alamance Community College, Rowan Cabarrus Community College, uh, the Capstone Center, which is a part of BioNetwork at Wake Tech uh, Community College. Um, there'll be uh, visits to Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine, NC State Centennial Campus, uh, and in addition to uh, North Carolina Central's Bright. Um, and at the same time, there'll be many visits to industry partners such as Biogen Idact. Uh, in the past, we've visited Tengion, Targacept. So we look forward to seeing you um, to come to the Biosciences Industry Fellowship uh, Program for the month of June uh, 2015 here at Winston-Salem at Foresight Technical Community College. Thank you. My name is Heather King. Um, I teach developmental math here at Forsyth Technical Community College. I chose the BIF program because every summer I like to do some kind of professional development activity and I thought it would be a good one. I knew nothing about biotechnology before the program and thought it would possibly help me with my math courses. Um, I've learned a lot of applications that I can take and use in my developmental math courses. I'm planning hopefully to redesign the courses and put the applications in the individual developmental math courses to help the students to make math more relevant for them. I would re recommend this program to others. I think it's really beneficial, especially um, for those teachers or instructors that 
know nothing about biotechnology. I learned so much about just the biotechnology field and I think it would help English instructors, business instructors, to help them incorporate some of the same ideas in their classes. Hi, I'm Dr. Scott Gavart. I work for St. Louis Community College at Florissant Valley Campus, and I am a program coordinator and biology faculty member. I chose to come to the BIFP program because I was really interested in learning more uh, different industry skills, really. In St. Louis, we have a lot of agriculture and sort of crop biotechnology companies, and we're starting to see more of the pharmaceuticals and chemical technology pop up, and I would really like to be able to learn those skills since I know North Carolina has a lot more of those sorts of companies in the area and then bring those skills and expectations from that industry back for my students. While the industry experiences were top notch, it was really learning from my colleagues that I found loving the most in the end. I would definitely recommend the BIF program to others, uh, not only learning from a variety of people in multiple disciplines, but just the exposure to industry and recognizing that the industry really does want to work with the community colleges and help to enhance student learning so that our students have the best skills possible to come into their industry and their companies and really succeed without needing a lot of training before. My name is Igor Kraydin. I am a professor of physics and engineering department in Suffolk University, and I am also adjunct professor at Roxbury Community College STEAM department. I already have background in physics and engineering, and uh, biotechnology is new field of engineering and uh, this program is an excellent way to have new experience in this field. I definitely will recommend this program to other uh, instructors and professors because this is, a, again, an excellent way to have the new experience in this fast-growing field of industry. My name is Damon Lindell. I'm currently an academic advisor and adjunct here at Forsyth Technical Community College. I currently serve on an agroscience uh, consortium out of North Carolina State University under Dr. Lisa Gion, and that sparked my interest in the whole bioscience, agroscience um, technologies. And when I saw this came about, this was an opportunity that was too good to pass up. I learned that almost anything is possible, you know, if you have the right collaboration of folks, professionals working together. And he, along with the, the biosciences, biotechnologies, I learned that there's so many different entities coming together, engineers, scientists, chemists. I would strongly recommend it uh, for everyone. It's a great discipline, uh, it's needed, and it's, um, it's valued work. It's going to be very um, beneficial for the global community in general. Good afternoon, everybody. I think I may have to, don't mind me if you see me stepping off and on, you know. That is the character of, um, of a teacher, of an instructor. They don't stay in one place. They keep going up and down. Now, um, the bioscience awareness is so important to us that I didn't have an idea of what I was getting into until after the one month program. But after the one month program, I felt like recruiting everybody around me to have an idea of what's going on in biotech and in bioscience. So what I'm going to share today is just very briefly what my own experiences are and even with my own colleagues who are here. Because believe you me, it was a boot camp for one week. Yeah, we stuck together and we did it together and that was good. My name is Jude Okoye. I'm here in Forsyth Tech, Life Sciences. I teach biology. That's, that's help me get this down. Okay, thank you. When we went into this program, we had a lot of questions. And I'm gonna take these questions both from 
the organizers because we had to ask a lot of questions to them. And also the questions we were asking when we got to the different institutes and different academic institutions and companies because we had to ask questions. And the whole idea was this. From what we got from the organizers is to look at bioscience and its disciplines. Get people from very diverse areas. That's why you saw the physicist was there, the guy who doesn't even know anything about biotech. Uh, Heather, who is in, in math, you know, I remember both of us doing the first experiment in the lab. <laughs> I'm not going to review that. I'm not going to say much about that. But then we, I was, we also had to look at the biotech career path, the required skills for you to be in biotech. What are the resources for it, both nationwide and in North Carolina? And how do we sustain this biotech workforce? Looking ahead, I will share my experiences in the BIF, BIFP program and then the industries and institutes that we visited. Biotech, as far as you know, and once you get into bioscience, encompasses a lot of things, both from the genetics to food science to microbiology to ecology to botany. You know, it's so widespread that once you get into it, uh, the sky is just the beginning of your limit. It's not even the limit of it. And the question anybody will ask is, what are the skills that are needed? Those are the questions we were asking them when we go to the industries. You know, for the young folks who are sitting here, you know, those are the kind of things you're going to ask and say, how do I get into it? What are the things I need? for me to be in this field. And we're asking those kind of questions also. And these were the, the, the summary of the answers that we had got, got from those guys. Remember, we visited a lot of institutes, and I'm going to show you those institutions at the end of the slide. But this just gives you the summary of what we got. You have to have the analytical skills. You have to have the communication skills. You have to have this critical thinking, because you're going to be in the lab and doing experiments. You have to be very observational. You have to know how to observe your experiment you are doing, have the technical skills, and then have what is called the soft skills. You know, be able to have a very strong work ethics and other things. Be a very good team player. That thing is very important. Very, very, very important. It was repeated to us almost in the whole visitations we made. You have to be a good team player. Why? You are going to meet people from very diverse backgrounds, people from different countries. I think she's here. Where's the director? She spoke to us at Alamance. She's here. She told us that in her institute there were about a hundred and something. Yes, yes a hundred and said there were so many, so many nationals. I still remember that information you gave us. It's stuck in my head. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know? You so said there are people from different, very, very, very diverse background, right in that same place. So you have to be a team player for you to fit in and be able to do your job in that kind of an environment. That's biotech for you. And I started looking again to find out what the, the biotech facts are, both in the US and in North Carolina. The job profile is very good. What you do, you work with the biological and medical scientists in the lab, do a lot of lab tests and experiments. Your work environment is mostly in the lab. How do you become one? You need a very strong background in sciences, biology, chemistry, or physics, and so on. Gain the required you know, lab experience. You can do that through your internships. And most of them have paid internships. Most of them do. This is the game changer here. What does the pay look like? Because people will tell you, I got to follow the money. Yeah, we got to follow the money quite all right. Okay, and this is what's going on in this industry. On the average, the, the median annual wage nationwide for biological te technicians was about uh, 40,000. That was about May. Remember these figures because that's going to help us a lot. And we have this part. So people in life sciences, physical and so on, life sciences, occupation, it goes about 60,000. Look at the bio, people in the biological tech. It's about 40,000. And for all occupations, you're looking at about 34,000. So even by stepping into the biotech industry, you are already way ahead in your pay. What's going on here in North Carolina, to be very specific? 
In North Carolina, this biotech raises about f almost 59,000 billion a year. Just the biotech industries. And it employs about 58,000 residents. 50% of them are the biotechnicians. So about 50% of that workforce are in biotech. I mean, exclude all other, you know, uh, the people you need in the industry, people who help out in accounting, people who help out in this and that. 50, but 50% 50 of them are purely in biotech. And that projection is, is keeping growing to about 10%. So even when the economy was going south, the biotech industry was employing people. Those are the kind of information we're getting from them. Why? Because there is a lot of demand for drug development processes. So if you're in it, if you're in biotech, you should be involved in this always. There are a lot of clinical trials that's going on. A lot. And a lot of money are being pumped in every day in this. You know. Just this afternoon, I was listening to the NPR news, and I was hearing the news about uh, cystic fibrosis. And they have pumped in about 3.3 .3 billion, billion dollars into that single project. 3.3 .3 .3 billion. I mean, that is biotech for you. Who's going to do all those research? The biotechnicians, people in biotechnology. Then look at what the, the, the salary is, the entry level salary is for first degree. 55,000 in North Carolina. Oh, yes. And that information came from an industry. So this is, this is fat and figures. The placement rate for this institute when their students graduate is 90% placement. So that means even before you graduate, people are already knocking on your door and asking you, do you want a job? And the current average of very unfortunate is that the number of graduates we're getting is not meeting up to the demand of the industries. And so there is a very growing need for trained biotech and biotechnicians. And we've got to start doing that awareness in schools. This is where we had to talk with people in Tangent, and they told us they did a school survey. And they found out that the information is not, is not so well being put out there among the students, for them to know the advantage and what they can gain by becoming biotech, biotechs. The information is not there. And this came from a survey by a company. So what did we propose? At the end of the one month, we had to give, up, give our own ideas, suggestions, based on our experiences for the past one month. That was in June. Okay, And these were some of the proposals that we put forward. There must be something like a consistent biotech awareness at different school levels, whether it is in the, in, the, in the community colleges, whether it is in the universities, whether it is in high school or middle schools. And these are the career paths if you are in biotech. Okay, by, the time you fin you by the time you finish as a biotech, you have a lot of places you can go to research and development, manufacturing, quality control, clinical trials and so on and so forth. A lot of them. No wonder the job market keeps growing this. The demand is there. The opportunities are there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Where are the places or areas that you can go to be trained as a biotech, can be in academics. Can, there are a lot of research institutes that do the training industries and other biological affiliates like what you have in the TGP. So there are a lot of places that one can go to get a training into this field. What did we propose, or myself and my partner proposed to, and said this is what we think are the ways to help out in making the, this awareness right into the communities. We can start from the middle and high schools, have some kind of biotech intro, do some bi-monthly introduction to, to biotech in the labs and equipment, you know, just to run a demonstration and to raise the awareness and the interest of the students. Do outreach programs, do a survey assessment to see what, whether what we are doing here is making any impact. In the universities we should, and colleges have very consistent, this word is very important, but consistent seminars and workshops. You know, keep putting the word out there. 
and have a very comprehensive and sustainable partnership with the biotech institutes. If possible, let there be something like bi bioscience awareness centers created in the different institutions where, where students can go to and get information about, about uh, bio, bioscience, you know. And partnership with the media. I was just thinking of this and they came up, sorry Ross, I didn't put that in the slide I gave you. <laughs> But I was just thinking of it, and the thing came up and said, hey, if we have this partnership with the media, where at least somebody can come in once in a week or two times in a week and talk about biotech. They can come to your office and ask you, what is it all about? And the people in the community will be listening to what you're saying. You know, that is very powerful in creating awareness, too. It can be also through things like experiments on the website. These are for actually the, the middle school. The, uh, you can do that in middle schools and do very simple experiments so that the students will know what you are doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the time this is doing, somebody will say, what's going on here? How does it happen? And we should be able to explain what's going on with the experiment. Very simple things to raise people, students' awareness about the biotech. There are websites also for it where we can have some of this information, the visual labs. In summary, the biotech is a very growing and rapid, very, very growing at a very rapid pace. There's a gap in the demand and supply of trained biotechnologists. We need extensive and consistent outreach and awareness programs are required to get them going. Track the students' performance and how far are they responding to this. And then educate them on the available resources tell them about the program and the job opportunities in this field. And uh, the institutes we visited, a lot of them. This is just some of them. Thank God uh, Denise is here. Okay. The day we were in that institute, we, uh, we did a lot of HPLC. <laughs> We did a lot of work on the HPLC, you know, talked a lot and did a lot of hands-on experience. I want to tell you something. In all these institutes we visited, we are doing hands-on experiments. Hands-on on them. Okay. So um, it was very good and very challenging. For my experience, it was a very good one. And it was, I so much thank the organizers. Ross is here with his team. Micah is here. Mona is somewhere here. You know, and all those people, the dean is here. You know, they were asking me, what, what, what were we doing in your lab? I said, we were cutting the DNA. <laughs> 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 you know, so we, we had a lot of fun and it was very good. But one question that keeps popping in my mind is how do we sustain this whole thing? And one of them should be that we must take this information not just within the four walls of this auditorium, but we should put that word out there so that people will know what it's, what's going on. This were the, the P, BIF P programs, and um, these are the, the fellows. We are 10 of us in it, you know. We, 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 we all were able to go through the motion for one month. Thank you so much for listening. Um, so my name is Heather King and I teach developmental math and study skills here at Forsyth Tech. And my takeaway from this or my purpose for coming to the program was to learn about how math is related um, to this field. So first thing, what do you hear in every single math class you've ever been in? I can't hear you. <laughs> Why do we need this? Why do we need this? What else? I hate math. <laughs> <laughs> Teacher's worst nightmare. Um, so some of the things I hear, of course, on a daily basis, why do I need to know this? 
when will I ever use this? Um, and as a teacher, that's kind of hard because I didn't have a degree in applied math. Um, so I didn't experience all those, those places that I could use it. So I've relied heavily on the internet for information, textbooks for information, and I felt like it was time for me to, to get into the real stuff, okay, so I could help my students. Also, I learned um, during the experience that in science class, a lot of students will say, I never learned this math in my math class. So, I mean, that was eye-opening for me as well, that these students are saying they never learned it, and I know they did. <laughs> Um, so the first thing that kind of jumped out to me, I took all the concepts that are in our developmental math courses, like proportions, equations of lines, percents, fractions, and I sat down at, at the end of this experience and said, what do all of those have in common? And it completely shocked me at the end, but every single one of them has some kind of biotech application to it. I had no idea before the experience. So what I've done in my slides is you'll see a couple of slides of my experience, the different hands-on activities that we did and how I can incorporate that into my math classes. So the first one is really devoted, um, for those of you in high school, it's probably an Algebra one topic. For us at Forsyth Tech, it's DMA 040. Um, but when we were at Forsyth Tech, that was the first week. Um, our first boot camp was here with Alan Beard. And um, one of the things that we did, we worked with fish. <laughs> um, and we did some DNA profiling of fish. And we, learned, we did some electrophoresis, my yes. favorite new yes. word. Correct. Okay, yes, yeah, it's pretty Correct. awesome stuff. Um, ran some gels on that machine. And one of the actual problems that happened during that week was this. Suppose you have a stock solution, electrophoresis um, buffer solution that is used in a protein profiler investigation of fish. The stock is 10 times more concentrated than the desired buffer. How would you prepare 400 milliliters at the correct concentration? So that actually happened to us, an actual problem that we experienced, right? Yeah, exactly. I think it was... Yeah. yeah. Um, and so in order to do that, there's a really simple formula, a formula that I can teach my DMA students. It's not complicated. And some of you may have seen it before. It's a concentration and volume formula. And it's just concentration one times volume of the first thing is equal to concentration two times volume of the second one. So in that particular course, we learn about equations. This is a really simple equation that I can use with my students. So I now have a takeaway, something I can tell them when they say, why do I need to learn how to solve equations? I have an example to show them. Uh, the second one that I have comes from Rowan Cabarrus with Denise. Um, while we were there, we worked the very first day with peppers um, and trying to determine how hot peppers are. And you do that by measuring the level of capsaicin. Um, and this is one of the machines that was used called, called an HPLC. Um, during that experiment, and these are not the actual numbers from that experiment, but during that experiment, what we did is we took um, different peppers and um, different levels of capsaicin that we knew, put it into the machine and found the absorb absorbance level, absorbent level of that. And you can tell from the graph, does that kind of look like a line? Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of our courses, again, this is an Algebra 1 topic for those of you in high school, but um, one of our courses here is all about linear equations. And so I was like, this is great. This is a perfect example for my students. So what I would have my students do first is take those data points and then to see if they can come up with the equation um, for the line of best fit. The high school students, have you heard that term before? Best fit line, line of best fit? Okay, so this is a real world application of this. Um, do you all know how to find the equation? Do you know the formula for the equation of a line? I bet you do. I bet it's going to look familiar to you, called slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Have you seen that before? I knew you had. Okay, so that's the formula that you could use. Taking two points, you can come up with the equation of the line, but that's not enough. I mean, the equation of a line doesn't really mean anything if you don't have a question to ask. So then I would then ask my students to make a prediction of the level of capsaicin based on an absorbance, absorbance level. So they could then use that information to find other information. All right, the third one, um, here at Forsyth Tech, it's a course called DMA 060, dealing with polynomials and quadratic equations. And this happened while we were at Alamance Community College. We talked about bioreactors. And one of the things that really stuck with me, especially when we visited um, one of the industries up there that's listed as called biogenotic, 
Um, one of the things that we were told a couple times is your body is a bioreactor. And that really, y'all remember that? Yeah, that really stuck with me. Um, so your body is like a bioreactor. Um, so this particular example, you have a bioreactor that holds 2,000 liters of broth. There are about 2 times 10 to the ninth bacteria in each milliliter of the broth. And then you're trying to figure out how many bacteria are present in the entire bioreactor. So, of course, the first thing that the students would have to do would be to change everything to the same unit, right? Got to have the same units. So convert the liters to milliliters. And then after that, it becomes a really simple problem. The students can set up a proportion. And again, this is a problem that I could give even in my DMA 030 class for them to set up a proportion. So just another example with bioreactors. And then my last example um, deals with, uh, of course, DMA 070, which is getting into Algebra 2. And when we were at um, Bio Network, which is on the Centennial campus of NC State, we talked about something called Stokes Law, of how you can separate solids from liquids. And this example came up. So the settling velocity is jointly proportional to the square of the diameter and the difference in the densities of the solid and the liquid um, are inversely proportional to the viscosity. For the constant of proportionality, use gravitational acceleration divided by 18. Does it sound like I'm speaking a different language? <laughs> yeah, okay. But my, my 070 students can now take that problem because they know the words jointly proportional. Um, they know the word inversely proportional. They know constant of proportionality, and they can take a real law that exists, Stokes' law, and they can now come up with it. I don't have to give it to them. They can take this information and then, of course, come up with it themselves, the formula themselves. Um, I'm going to test you for a minute. Do you know which one it is? Anybody? A or B? Yeah, 50-50 shot. It's actually A. Um, and of course, when we talk about jointly proportional, it's multiplication, inversely is division. Um, and then, of course, I would probably go on and ask them another question, what happens to the, the settling velocity when the viscosity increases? But again, this is something that my students can now do. So the other thing I want to mention about something I hear every single day in my math class, do I have to show my work. Have any of you ever said that before in your math class? Do I have to show my work? And I, I don't know before this if I've ever had a good reason for my students, except I told you you have to. Um, but of course, we're, we're wanting the process. Um, every single lab that we did, we had this thing called, I think it's a batch production record. Am I saying that correctly? Where we had to document every step of the experiment every single step and not only did I have to sign off that I had done something Damon may have had to sign off that I really did do it okay so there was a double check so my big takeaway huge takeaway for my math students is I now have a reason why you really need to show your work um, and this shows us in the lab if you didn't document it you didn't do it okay so hopefully my students have gotten that idea as well so that's all I know everybody's inundated with a lot of good information, and you guys got all that, I'm sure. Uh, again, my name is Damon Lindell, and I've served in a number of capacities here at Forsyth Technical Community College. Uh, principally, I've been a student success academic advisor, college transfer, and I've had great opportunities to work with young people, high school transitioning up to college, two year and four year. And when I initially was uh, approached about this, um, the BIF program, I, my head almost exploded because science wasn't my top uh, priority in high school. Uh, it later became that, but it, it was such a great opportunity to meet and learn from such very outstanding professionals. And I mean, in each one of their crafts, they, they were able to bring the biotechnologies into theirs. And I was thinking to myself, how in the world am I just a communicator going to be able to do this. And I, I learned that I'll be the liaison. I'm the sounding board. I'm the one that try to convince the teachers, some of our colleagues, co-workers to get in this program, uh, some of our young people in STEM or STEAM as we call it now, uh, 
the, the question on the History Channel, and I do profess to be an undercover nerd, geek, whatever you want to call it. I watch the History Channel. And there was a question posed up there, and they, I think they put it to the fact that in 2050, there will be double, double the population on Earth. However, I was smart enough to know that we're not doubling the Earth. So that means we're going to need to be able to sustain feed. We're going to have to house, clothe, energy. We're going to have to figure all these things out. How do we do this, Damon? I may not be around to see it. If I am, that's going to be a medical miracle. But you young people will be. And my job and our instructors, our teachers, and our professionals' job is to get you interested, get you understanding that you can not only work and make a great wage, but you can seriously make a sustainable difference in the globe, globally, not just locally, all over the world. And if we can get young people to start thinking in those terms of, you know, I want to work, but I want to do something very positive. I want to do something that changes things. I've seen a couple of commercials like that, but honestly, when I got through the program, and as much as I could, I stole from everybody I was around. They, they didn't know it, but I was learning so much. I tried not to talk, which is tough for me, but I tried to listen a lot more because I learned so many different things from science, physics. I mean, everybody in all these genres in my head was just going, wow, how can I help? How can I apply this? And I think my gift is speech and being able to be a, a, just a sounding board. And my hope is that not only the people in this room, but the folks who go out, you go on and tell about this. You tell about the program. You tell about the great things that are happening, but they're, they're good things. They're things that are necessary. So you can get paid on top of being brilliant, on top of being a game changer for, for the globe. Does that kind of make sense? A little bit? I'm trying to get you fired up, but I also want to make sure that you got the information that's necessary. And I don't want to go too much because I know uh, Russ is going to sum it all up for us. But I had a blessed opportunity professionally, socially, academically, in every instance. And it was just great to meet Micah. Micah fed us so well. I love that part about it, too. We almost got the steak, too. <laughs> but no, it, it was a tremendous, tremendous time. And if I could do anything else, Honestly, I could talk all day about it, but I, I want to impress upon everybody to, you know, tell your colleagues, you know, they can talk to us. They can definitely talk to Micah or Russ. Uh, you know, try to try to take this opportunity. Please advance in your sciences and maths and, and really go out to make a professional difference out there. Thank you for your time. Oh, by all means. Any questions, concerns? Always remember to have one question for a speaker, always. I don't care if you're thinking about your grocery list, but just kind of <laughs> have one question, you know, will it be peace in the Middle East? Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and my shoe's too tight. What, you know, something, think of something and always throw it out. Sir, oh, I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Oh, yes. Yes. Virtually all of the, the colleges do, but I know uh, we had on our websites, we had some websites that yes. I think, Jude, yeah. I know on my clips we had some websites as well. We'd be happy to kind of share that with you yeah. and definitely we'll get the mic on. Alamance has one, Alamance Community College. College. Mm -hmm. And possibly Rome too. Alamance. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we definitely would share that. Very good question, sir. Absolutely great question. I know, and I'll let our, my panelists also just speak to this. What I found, the collaboration, the efforts, and the passion that everyone had, they truly wanted to be there, and they knew they were making a difference. It, you know, I, my biggest thing was I was worried about uh, blowing up the lab or something. I didn't want to. I don't want to be that guy that you know caused a major catastrophe. Um, but I, I looked at the teamwork and how the checks and balances all went in. And each department, everybody we talked to professionally, there it was all in line. It was all protocol, and they loved what they're doing. So it wasn't they didn't work a day in their life. Honestly, those guys spend almost 24 hours there, and I think they would do 48 if you know without eating if they could. So uh, that's one of the, the consistent things I found that they loved what they're doing. They were passionate, very knowledgeable, and it wasn't work to them. It just really flowed. Yeah. And And see, like I mentioned in one of my slides about the skills, the, the 
f everywhere we went to and spoke with them, one thing was very outstanding, teamwork. Mm -hmm. You must be a team player, period. Because people come with different ideas, talents, different gifts, different, I mean, mention it, people are in physics, some people are coming from computer science. So, you know, everybody has to come to that round table and bring up all their ideas together. It was something that was being repeated and repeated to us, you know. So, yes. And that was what made them to enjoy what they were doing a lot. They were all very happy about it. Absolutely. They were. It's on yours, I think. Mm -hmm. We could pull it up, or we might even be able to, if they need a copy of our slides, yeah. we'd be able to give that as an attachment. Yeah. There, there will be. Okay. There will be. Our, be on okay, there will be on the website. Okay. And I think it was a young lady. Yes. Okay. Have a math and background. Be Absolutely not. I'm living proof of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, you would learn so much more from it. I think actually I, I got a better perspective because as a non, uh, as a novice in that area, I, I came into it clean with no prejudices, no already preconceived ideas and notions. Not that they're wrong, but it's just the facts that they're used to. I came in and as a sponge, it just it just really made sense uh, towards the end. And actually, I would love to do another. We need to do a post a post biff. I think for the yeah. folks who want to get some more punishment. I would love to spend some more time in the lab. Like I didn't know how much. How exciting yes. that was, my partner. <laughs> yes. um, but that was so neat. I, I hadn't been in a lab in years, and I don't have a science background. And definitely with my math, I didn't get the chance to work in a lab. But yet yeah, to have that lab jacket on, I felt proud walking around the, <laughs> yeah. walking around for Scythe Tech. I mean, that was awesome. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Super. Sir. Yes, sir. Working at a high school uh, and looking at the STEM and on bioscience, I wonder if there's an opportunity. When I look at the fellowship, I see that this is primarily focused on college faculty. Yes, sir. Is there an opportunity for high school faculty mm -hmm. to participate in any program similar to this so that you know, a great math teacher mm -hmm. at a traditional high school or a sure. STEM focused high school could embed some of this mm -hmm. content? Well, I can answer that question. Um, yes, there most definitely is. Um, high school teachers, uh, community colleges, four-year university instructors, uh, even maybe some middle school instructors. The biggest problem that we end up having, though, is the high schools are usually in session when we're doing this, so the instructors aren't really available. If they are available, we would love to have them apply. There was, there was also, uh, I mentioned the uh, North Carolina State, I'm a Wolfpack, uh, NC State, I'm a Pack Deacon, so I got my undergrad at State and then my master's at Wake Forest. But the agri-science program at, with uh, Slash Biotech at NC State, and they targeted high school, uh, high school advisors and teachers as well as the college advisors, uh, four-year and um, two-year institutions as well. And you can go to their website and, and definitely find those. And even if you Google agri-science or biosciences, those, those programs are available in the summer, too, where a lot of uh, instructors and advisors might have an opportunity to, to have 30 days or so to, to visit. See, uh, really, that question is a very great question because it is a very foundational question on how to get the information to the middle and high school. At NC State, like he said, they have a program where they invite the high school students, take them around the whole lab, show them what the whole program is all about, teach them about bioscience, try to raise their awareness. It is a program they have in NC State. The coordinator spoke with us about it. The, the next thing we also proposed was that it is possible to have some outreach between the academic institutions 
in the high school and middle schools while the schools are in session. I mean, it may bring a little bit of disruption in the syllabus or the academic work of the high school students, but at the long run, it's going to pay off a lot. And what is that? Maybe some instructors or professors from the universities or community colleges or wherever, going to those high schools, it may be just once a week, maybe just twice in a week or three times in a month, to run simple demonstrations like the gel electrophoresis, isolation of the DNA. Just get them, get them to, to get interested in what is going on. And you can never know the kind of enthusiasm and the kind of spark you can make in somebody who we say, oh, I remember in high school, somebody came to teach us about DNA isolation and all, you know, that kind of awareness. So we can do it even when the school is in session, but we have to coordinate that effort. Thank you, sir. I think that was called the Golden Leaf Program, something like that, Google Golden Leaf. Any more questions, concerns? Mike and Denise, please come up. So, how did you enjoy this presentation? Big hand. So, um, they, they, they're official graduates of our fellowship program. So, like every good school, we have another diploma for you. Oh, oh, oh boy. Right. Wow. And uh, so, uh, please, please come on up. Um, this one we'll put aside. By the way, we, there was somebody that's not here that is a military veteran who is a part of the program, uh, but wasn't able to make it today, but did want to say to you that we offered this uh, open to returning veterans from, um, from the recent uh, uh, wars, unfortunately, that we've, that, that, that we've had to go through. And we did have one veteran who actually had no bioscience skills at all, mm -hmm. and he made it, and he made it very successfully yeah, and had a good time. So Jude, here we go, post, a postdoc diploma. That. Congratulations. We knew these weren't going to get broken. Maybe, maybe they will. Yeah. Football came back. Good catch. Heather. Congratulations. Damon, thank you so much. Thank you. On behalf of our team, thank you. Thank you. That was a good job. Very nice. So, so thanks, everybody. That concludes uh, our SciTech. I just want to thank uh, Michael Ayers again and, um, and his faculty, in particularly um, Alan Beard, was such a great help to us. And um, uh, I want to thank my colleagues, Denise and Micah, and also Mona Kofer. It, it wasn't an easy thing to pull this off, but uh, you know, I agree with Denise. Micah was the glue to this, and, and, and we did pull it off. We had it, we had it down to the nth detail, but we we were never sure about traffic, you know, like how much traffic we'd have on that interstate and I so know. forth. And we didn't know if everybody would show up. That was another thing. So, uh, and then when we had a couple of people that had interesting individual habits and, uh, you know, uh, uh, sometimes people would, you know, we were always there saying, are they going to show? Are they going to show? And they, and they did. For 30 days, they showed. However, uh, some people had cell phone policies that were different than ours and so forth. So it's a lot of fun, so I really strongly encourage the faculty to talk it up and to send uh, people for next year's BIF, which is now. Thanks very much. Thank you so much. <laughs>